walking back to the range. I would say it's windy, but it's died down a little bit, maybe because we're in our little valley for our pistol range. But I got some 5.56 ammunition to test today, another bag o ammo from our buddies Pine Valley Munitions out of Indiana. This is their 77 grain MK262 or Mark 262 Mod Zero. We'll throw this little bag of tricks on the table and see what we have in store today. For all of our 5.56223 testing, if you are now just joining the channel, we have five barrel lengths to test from, a 7.5 inch, 10.5 inch, 16, 20, and 22. We use a Pro Chrono Digital at about 12 to 15 feet. It's about 55, maybe 60 degrees outside today. We'll check our velocity in our barrels. We will do gel and accuracy on this, although the accuracy portion probably will take place on a different day because of the wind. Without further ado, we will get into this testing. We'll start with our shortest barrel length, which is our Palmetto State Army 7.5 inch upper. This is good for duplicating ranges over 200 yards when we're testing loads. Hopefully you can read the screen. I will probably read the numbers off to you just in case. I did put a filter on there, but it's still too bright to make much of a difference. 1828, 1848, 1839, 1801, 1848, 1816, 1831, 1819, 1809. Not bad. We're a little slower than the 75 grain gold dot. Now our 10.5 inch upper, another Palmetto State Armory build. This is actually a short barrel rifle. We have our Yankee Hill. QD muzzle brake on there. What we're actually gonna do is we'll fire the 10 rounds out of here for velocity, and then we have a 5.56 can that we'll throw in there to see if we gain a little bit more with the can. Now we threw our Turbo 556 from Yankee Hill on there to see if we get any more velocity out of this. We should get a little more. 2196. 2196 again. 2189. 2171. 2160. 2218. A little more gas is based. 2207. 2192. 2189. 2171. Good little jump there in velocity. Good idea if you're running these suppressed. And now our 16 inch stag. This is the bastard child. It is left hand eject, one and nine twist. Have an EOTech on here, hyperfire 24C trigger. BCM Ambi charging handle. 2487. 2464, 2047, 2047 again, 2501, 2478, 2478 again, 2473, 2042, 2492. And now our 20 inch AR, this is the Palmetto State Armory premium upper with the FN double chrome lined one in seven twist barrel. Have the uh, high quality Chinesium stag arms and the charging handle that they were selling for dirt cheap a couple Black Fridays ago that caused quite a stir. Haven't broken it yet. 2534, 2530, 
2530 again. 2515. 2525. 2530. 2530 again. 2534. 2515. 2520. And finally, our 22 inch TC compass. This has a one and nine twist barrel, have the Oryx chassis on here. Now you get to watch me fumble a bolt gun. Right in the face, 2578, 2564, 2549, 2559, 2530, 2559, 2544, 2574, 2539, 2544, and that's it. Here is our 77 green Sierra Match King MK Mark 262 Mod Zero Clone, 0 0.89. 0.88 and 0.87 inches at 100 yards. We've got our TC compass with the one and nine twist and our Oryx chassis with a three to nine scope on there. You can see there is a little bit of wind today. It's been pretty calm, but that's a pretty consistent group. We'll shoot a couple more and see if it improves or worsens, and then maybe we'll throw the 20 inch with the one and seven on there and see if I can do any better today. Our best group of the day from the TC Compass, 0.74 inches at 100 yards. Like I said, we have a little bit of wind today. It's not too bad, it goes in spurts. Really, really mild right now, but I'll take that. Very consistent. This is probably the sixth group that I've fired, and I fire these in a pretty short succession and you know the barrel gets a little warm i'm not taking 45 minutes to shoot five shots so i'm going to be really impressed with that i apologize about any of the wind noise it's pretty windy outside today not sure how the accuracy portion of this test will go but we're going to start with our gel test as always we have a six by six by 16 clear ballistics gel block at about 12 feet we'll start with our seven and a half inch barrel go to 10 16 and then 22. We'll probably do the seven and a half inch and then 10 and a half inch and then go look at the results. Hopefully you can see the screen here. I put one of the UV privacy filters on to help cut down on some of the glare. Velocity 18.28. In our 10 and a half inch barrel, this is a Palmetto State Armory build. We have a Yankee Hill Turbo 556 on there. Should be a little quieter. Velocity 21.75. painted our backstop black here so we don't get so much stainless steel shining off here. The wound track in the foreground is the seven and a half inch very very long neck just like the ten and a half inch in the background that's at least four inches of neck there before we get some disruption. Both exhibit some disruption right around starting at the same spot. The seven and a half inch is there. We exceed the 16 inches of this block and right here you can see it going up and out and it actually hit our backstop and this is what we ended up with right here didn't no expansion the 10 and a half inch said where there's our wound track right there and we are those two pieces 
of jacket right there and possibly the base. We'll flip that around and see if we can see that a little better. So there are the two parts of the bullet. Neat that it did two tracks there. This one goes out to the 24 inch mark. So pretty deep penetrating. It's fragmenting out of the 10 and a half inch. So that's a pretty good thing. I'm gonna guess these 16 and 22 are gonna provide us with even more. And now our 16 inch will go for right in the center of this block. I'm expecting more fragmentation so we'll take this shot before we flip the block over. Velocity 24.96. This shot right down here is our 16 inch. Still a really long neck with that thing. Not sure if that's how MK262 is designed. It's a 77 grain Sierra Match King. A lot more disruption though, starting after about, you know, five inch mark here. I can see a little bit of lead fragments there. Uh, hard to see here because of the block, but it looks like we've got two wound tracks going on there. So you get a top-down shot. Kind of hard to see. Sorry about this. This one right here is the 16-inch. Now, I'll try to see, we'll move these out of the way and see where it went. Looks like our maximum penetration with the 16 inch is right here on the 21 inch mark. We have two separate fragments going on there, kind of like the 10 and a half inch. We'll grab these out of there in a second. You can see right there they are, kind of the same thing. The base of the bullet is farther forward and there is the front of the bullet. And now our 22 inch, this is our TC compass. Hopefully there's enough room on the block for a solid shot so we can see the difference. Velocity 2583. That was loud. All right, our 22 inch, we have a much shorter neck now, right around three inches. Starting around the four and a quarter to five inch mark, we have fragmentation happening. You can see some lead or maybe not in that wound track. The one in the foreground here is a 22 inch. Right around the nine to 10 inch mark, here is more lead. We start coming down towards the end of the block, right around the 15, you know, 16 inch mark. You can see a fragment there, and there is our bullet. We'll dig that guy out in a second. I'll give you a top-down shot here. You can see right here, this one is our 22-inch. Lots of disruption going on there. Fragments going in a few different areas. I apologize about the wind. So here is our lineup. Of course, we'll always run the macros afterwards. That way you guys can get a nice clean picture of them with extra light and not being overexposed or anything. I always throw a link on Flickr down in the comments. So if you want to check them out, so you get lots of time to study them. But this is our seven and a half inch, the 10 and a half inch, 16 and 22. Really good size expanded bullet there in the 22. 10 and a half inch and the 16 inch seem to offer pretty similar performance there. Maybe a little less lead. Like I said, we'll weigh these and figure it out. Did not get any effect out of the seven and a half inch. Velocity doesn't seem to be there. 
at least with this particular bullet construction. So we have basically a tumbling and yawing bullet at that velocity. But again, that's many hundreds of yards out. That's why I use four different barrel lengths. You know, this is giving you contact distance and then this is what you're gonna get downrange a little bit and then even further out. Another successful test with our bag of bullets from Pine Valley. This Mark 262 Mod Zero clone using the 77 grain Sierra Match King did really well. We had good velocities on, out of all of our barrels. We were a little slower than what I've tested MK262 in the past on, but when I talked to Pine Valley, they said they were a little more concerned with better accuracy out of this load than all out performance. We had good accuracy with this load. The six or seven groups that I tested with the TC Compass were all printing under one inch. The 20 inch I've just kind of given up on for now. I'll have to visit using that at a later date. But I was just trying to see if the one in seven twist would give us any better results. And the TC Compass gave us the best results. Our gel tests provided us with more than adequate penetration out of all the barrel lengths. We didn't have any failures to fire on this. Pine Valley is actually now using Norma Brass. So if you look at any of those close-ups and you see that it's nice and shiny instead of a dull or dirty look or more exposed annealing, that's because they've actually changed the brass. So we'll have to continue to test that. They actually did send me a loading that we'll have to test a little later when I have some time. This is their 9mm. It's a 90 grain frangible load using Gecko Norma Raug brass as well. So we'll have to see how that runs in our guns. These are good for steel targets at close range when you want to minimize backsplash. As always I'd like to thank Pine Valley Munitions for asking us to test this load. My Patreon supporters. I always put that link in the description below. And you all for watching. Until next time. Catch at the range.